So in the 1960s, Death of a Salesman. Who wrote Death of a Salesman? Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller, of course. Also, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Also premiered. So that's the 60s. Then we move into the 1970s. Hits like Harold Pinter's Betrayal. You remember that one. Uh, the musical Chicago, also in the 1970s. These two plays were by white men, and they featured the predominantly white context of the white family. Okay? Then we get into the 1980s. A little bit of a shift here. August Wilson, he directed a play called Fences. Okay? So that was a black man in August Wilson writing about the black man experience. Um, then we have Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera uh, became one of the most financially successful plays of all time, okay, as a musical. We moved into the 90s, a little bit more of groundbreaking territory, Angels in America. So that's a story about homosexuality in America. Then we moved into the first few years of the 21st century. So we have Top Dog Underdog, so that was about two African American brothers, and it was written by an African American female. Then we move into the last couple of years. So what plays do you think resonate for you as, as newly formed classics? So we have uh, Hadestown. Is that it? Is that the biggest one of the last couple of years? Dear Evan Hansen. How about Frozen? Does, <laughs> does that get the list? Is there anything else the last couple of years? Hamilton. Hamilton, of course, Hamilton. So Hamilton is a play that has broken lots of barriers. So previously, the plays that were the biggest, the Disney plays, the ones that financially had the biggest success were around $50 million a year. Hamilton, double that, $100 million. It takes a historically, um, a historic representation of an American figure, and it uses a very culturally diverse and racially mixed cast to play out that story. And it also uses a genre of music that is ethnically um, motivated in what? Hip hop. Right? So you have hip hop music, you have an ethnically diverse and racially diverse cast, and you have this play that is focused on a story that could be in the classic genre, but it blows up into something phenomenal. So we're going to talk about something today. We're going to talk about classics, and we're going to talk about what is a classic and who decides what that canon is, and we're also going to talk about who should be cast in the classics. And we're going to talk about that debate a little bit. The reason why we're talking about that is for four reasons, right? Number one is what I just said, the emergence of um, Hamilton, this non-traditional play that exploded onto the scene. The second is the shifting demographics of the audience. So the audience is shifting. It's not the same as what it used to be. And so because of that shift, we are seeing differences in the business. And the third is that, the evolving business demands of the Broadway theater. We have some people who can speak to that here today, but because business is changing, we all know money makes the world change in positive and negative ways, and the theater is changing uh, in one of those ways, and we'll talk about it. And the last is progressive attitudes about business, about organizations. Now, let's be clear. The theater is an industry, and it is a business. And as progressive attitudes change, particularly in entertainment around diversity, the theater must respond. Okay? So we're going to talk about that, and we have a variety of panelists here with us today. So we have the uber performer. I'm going to go into these a little bit in more detail. We have the super producer, <laughs> right? And then we have our tag team of writers, a dynamic duo there, from, both from Columbia, and then we have the administrator, the esteemed CEO.